My name is Tim Myers. I am a senior architect for the Ghetto team here at VMware. Um, for those of you that don't know, Ghetto is the Global Engineering Technical Operations team. Uh, our primary responsibility lies with any type of architecture for any public facing events. Um, things that you're probably familiar with are the VMworld Labs. Um, our team is responsible for that. We also do a lot of internal um, guidance around uh, internal deployments here at VMware. Um, so, so why use virtual I.O.? Virtual I.O. is um, becoming more and more uh, increasingly popular in the enterprise. In any environment, you have to be able to determine what your bottlenecks are. Um, a lot of bottlenecks today exist from customers trying to virtualize, putting a large amount of virtual machines on a particular server, and not necessarily having enough bandwidth um, coming from that server to get them to their network, to get them to their storage, that sort of thing. And if you find that you outrun those, um, the, the Zego Virtual I.O. solution gives you the opportunity to very conveniently um, add more bandwidth quickly into your environment, real time, and actually be able to loosen the strain on the bandwidth constraints that you may have had originally. The, the, the concept of the, the server profile is also very interesting to us in that we can wrap all of the you know, virtual I.O. associated with a particular server into a profile and be able to seamlessly move that profile server to server um, if the situation warrants it. Customers that like to do boot from SAN, um, back to the, to the virtual profile that we talked about before, if I can wrap uh, all of my um, MAC addresses from my NICs and, and worldwide names of my HBAs into a profile and that server dies for whatever reason, I can seamlessly move all of that information to another physical server and bring that server back up very rapidly. Um, QoS capability is another thing that's interesting. If I have different tiers of storage or different tiers of performance from different customer groups and customer one needs more bandwidth than customer two. I have the opportunity to apply QoS um, from a Zego perspective. If I need additional NICs, if I need additional HBAs, I can actually provision them from the Zego director and they just um, appear on the ESX server. I don't have to reboot, I don't have to schedule any downtime. With the multiple um, I.O. modules that are available with the Zego virtual I.O. solution, I can, I can use that as my center communication channel between any protocol and any type of storage platform. So if I need to do fiber channel, I have a fiber channel I.O. module that's in my, um, my Zego director. If I need to do uh, any type of 10 gig ethernet, I have a 10 gig ethernet I.O. module that's in the back of my director. Um, I have obviously multiples for redundancy. Um, so from a, from a flexibility perspective, I'm not bound by the type of technology or the protocol that I want to use with this given solution. It's, it's adaptable and flexible enough to allow me connectivity to whatever choice that I may make from a technology perspective. The nice thing about, um, you know, I'll use the Zego plugin into vCenter as an example, is I can see the relationship of the, the virtual NICs and the HBAs to the physical port on the Zego to exactly where it's, you know, which server that it's plugged into. And I don't have to spend an exorbitant amount of time figuring out what's connected to what, and I can focus on what the bandwidth utilization looks like, um, which, you know, is a big, is a big time saver, right, in the overall troubleshooting exercise. It's very, very helpful and having that information provided to an administrator that's responsible for a virtualized environment by means of the vCenter plugin is just, you know, ease of integration and, and management from the, from the single pane of glass perspective. Several years ago, the standard for virtualizing was four NICs. So if you think about having to have at least four gigabit Ethernet cables for every single server. You're looking at, you know, four cables. You're looking at an out-of-band management cable. Um, you're looking at, if you were doing, um, say, fiber channel connectivity, you're looking at fiber cables. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't out of the norm to have, you know, six, eight, ten cables per server. When you talk about 10, 20 servers in a rack, the cable management becomes a nightmare. Troubleshooting network connectivity becomes a nightmare. 
um, knowing that I can eliminate that headache and literally go to two virtual I.O. cables into the back of a server and, and let that be the basis of all of my traffic with the exception of my out-of-band management um, is, is, is just, it's, it's cleaner, it's cooler, meaning that I, I, I essentially allow my hardware in, in a lot of cases to run more efficiently now because of the, the front-to-back um, airflow. You know, for us, one of the most amazing things is in the, you know, in the three years now that we've actually been using the Zego technology, we've never had a failed cable, never had a failed HCA, never had a director go offline. Um, you know, knock on wood, but I think that's just a testament to the overall resiliency and, and stability of the product and, and, you know, manufacturing process and, you know, the rigid QA guidelines that you guys have. I mean, that's knowing that you can confidently deploy a solution without having to worry about when it's going to fail is, is becoming more and more important. Um, it, was, it was extremely important before. As more and more people put their eggs in the basket going down the virtualization path, it becomes increasingly important because now I'm not losing a server. I'm potentially losing 30, 40, 50 servers. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's definitely different. And, you know, for people that have never seen it, and they look at the back of a rack that may have been previously, you know, just a mess. And then you can take that and you can, you can contrast that to a rack that's got virtual I.O. deployed in it. It's a night and day difference. The takeaway is there's a couple of key terms that are very, very easy to associate with virtual I.O. One of them is flexibility. One of them is capacity on demand. Um, one of them is, is bandwidth. Um, and when you, when, you, when you wrap all of those components together, the opportunity that you're faced with is um, an opportunity that, that gives you capabilities that you may have never had before. Capabilities such as, you know, the, 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 the kind of never get old VMware story is, you know, when I had a physical environment, if I had, you know, an internal customer that, say, needed a new server, or they were doing some testing on a new network or, or whatever the case may be, the amount of time to provide that service was 45 to 60 days. They had to procure the equipment. They had to get signatures. They had to wait for manufacturing. They had to get it racked and stacked and stood up and configured and deployed and kind of all those things. When you move to a virtual environment, you're kind of afforded that by default. Um, what you're not afforded is the ability to not have to necessarily go in and patch in new servers or new networks or new new SAN connectivity or any of those other things. Those actions still typically require physical bodies to walk into a data center and perform some sort of an action. Um, in a lot of cases it's scheduled and um, you know it's never as fast as we would like it to be. When you look at those same types of requirements from a virtual I.O. perspective, I can go into the switch and I can provision another HPA. I can connect it to um, a virtual switch. I can create a port group. I can deploy a virtual machine. My time to be able to provide you that service just got decreased tenfold, if not more. Um, you know, the same thing with an HPA. If I need to physically cable in an HBA and run the fiber cable to the SAN or to the fiber channel switch, that stuff all takes time. Um, you know, again, that opportunity to just go in, provision an HBA, assign it to a server, have it magically show up, and immediately have the opportunity to utilize its resources is, is very, very um, beneficial to the amount of time it takes to respond to a particular business need, um, you know, whether it be for production, whether it be for development, um, just having that capability complements what VMware does from a virtualization perspective on a, on a virtual machine or server or desktop level um, significantly.